Hey, and welcome back to Bildiere Flip. My name is Ion, and this is episode number 33. I lost count. Like, look up there. That's the episode number. You might have noticed uh, that Sackfold wasn't in many episodes. That is because uh, she moved back to Great Britain and so has a lot of less inclination to help with uh, the project. But I sweet talked another Seabase member into helping uh, me, which is Zakis. Uh, you can see uh, his hands uh, right there. Um, but he doesn't want to be uh, shown. So um, that's. That's uh, that's okay, because as long as the problem is being solved, um, uh, it's it's all uh, fine and dandy. So I'm so very thankful and hi Zakas, welcome to the team. Uh, Zakas has been working uh, off camera for quite some hours now on uh, the issue, and right now the working theory is that we uh, used uh, the pin ten of the Arduino as an input, which doesn't work uh, if you want to use uh, the SPI. Uh, a port of the Arduino so that it crashed when the SPI was um, being used. Uh, Zaka said that this is a very likely explanation for the symptoms we had. Uh, Zaka said that he fixed it and now we have to hook up the separate motor um, again and uh, see what happens. Zaka said we are ready for a test run and the separate motor is now hooked up and let's go. <laughs> okay, let's fiddle with the issue with some more. We are ready for uh, another test. Let's see if it moves now. <laughs> it moves! And it moves so much quieter and nicer. Okay, it's rather slow right now, but it's sounds a lot better. Awesome. This is just the demo code that came with the separate driver. So we can now verify that all of this is intact. And I guess now we just have to integrate that properly into the rest of the uh, code that Segfault wrote. So I guess that's then the next step. The images that you just saw, I just recorded them with my phone late last night after we already finished for the day and I took down all the cameras. Um, that was the separate driver just moving. And now it's the next day and uh, Zarkas uh, in his awesomeness has implemented a code that is supposed to read out um, the um, stall information of the driver. The stall information means that the driver now tells the Arduino when the separate uh, stepper stalls, which we think could allow us to detect if uh, if there is a book. So uh, let's test that. It did move a tiny bit. Let's debug uh, the uh, code written by Segfault and find out why the new separate driver doesn't work with Segfault's code yet. And then let's try again. I think it's time that this machine leaves the workshop. The next steps uh, are mainly fiddling with the software and firmware. I believe the electronics work now sufficiently after we've seen the demo code uh, do all we wanted it to do. So um, all the next step will be just software development. And that means that we shouldn't have the machine in the workshop, but have the machine in a way more accessible space, which in that case will be the space where the old book scanner is currently still residing. Um, I want to close up the machine and uh, change a little bit so it's easier to fiddle with the Arduino. And um, yeah, let me show you. Now that we've verified that all of this works, we can actually close this up. The only thing that we would need on the outside is this USB cable here. And this is the cable that's plugged into the Arduino directly to program it and to test stuff with the Arduino. Uh, and normally this other cable, that which is mounted here, 
would be plugged into the Arduino. This one goes to the Odroid, but right now the Odroid isn't controlling the Arduino. The computer is, because that makes it easier to go back and forth with different versions of the code and do a couple of changes. And later on, when the firmware works, we'll hook up the Odroid and have the Odroid control the Arduino. But for that, I need to open the thing up, but that's kind of okay. Uh, so I want to pass this cable through this opening. We have this um, on-off switch here that is still not hooked up or connected to anything. It's this open end here. And we don't need that right now because it's not connected to anything. So I can use that opening to pass out the USB cable. thread this directly back on. This is uh, the old book scanner. It has two cameras and uh, this part, but uh, for quite some time this wasn't functional because um, the firmware didn't work anymore and needed work and um, I hadn't time for it and I didn't need it that bad and then I we started working on the new book scanner and uh, didn't consider it to, to be useful, uh, it, it, it to be like worth my time to fix this up while I'm working on the new one and right now I think the time has come that this thing also leaves and is finally taken apart and decommissioned um, because I need the space now for the new book scanner, a LibreFlip, because this is actually a good spot to work on it. This spot really sucks uh, for filming. Um, this is why I need to put up additional light in here and it's still not great lighting, but um, it makes it easier for the developers to access the machine and that is paramount here. So the machine goes here and the old machine finally uh, goes away. Um, Bye bye old book scanner, uh, we spent many many hours together and you scanned many many books but I want to have a new one and it will be replaced by the new version. Yeah, uh, let's take it out. This is uh, the new space. I think it's a good space for the machine. And we'll continue developing here, but the light will be a challenge in this uh, corner of our lovely space station called Seabase. So um, let's see what I'll do with the light, because this imp improvised thing certainly won't help in the long term. But I believe it's the better spot to do the software development uh, because it's more accessible for the crew. And look at that, it's, it's space saving compared to the other image of the old book scanner there. This is a lot smaller. This is uh, the old book scanner. And now that LibreFlip stands where this thing used to stand, uh, it's time for this thing to go. So I'll take it apart and reuse uh, most of the parts or some of the parts and uh, put the other parts in the trash. This thing worked like this. You adjust the two sides like this with uh, these holes in here and you put in the book like this and these two sheets of glass they compress the book pages they flatten them so they are perfectly rectangular to the camera here and the camera there so they shoot like this and with that button I can shoot both cameras at the same time through this USB cable and here are two draw slides that move the thing up and down, and uh, there is a counterweight made from a Mata bottle filled with nails. Also a bright light up here, and uh, two PSUs for each of the two cameras. Uh, this is manual page turn, so you would turn a page, compress it, press the button, go back up, turn the page again, go back down, press the button, and you can do about 800 to 1000 pages per hour with this design, and it's nice and easy because of the counterweight. I built this in 2011 for studying at the university 
uh, they told me that, that all the books for the course would be roughly 1,700 euros. So I decided, nope, I can't afford that. And then I researched book scanning and found out about Daniel Reitz and looked at his designs and made something along those lines uh, without uh, taking any of his sketches, but all of his concepts, basically. And that got me into book scanning. And yeah, now I'm making LibreFlip and it's time for this thing to go and make some space for a LibreFlip. So we don't have much space on board Seabase, so this needs to be taken apart and reused and recycled. Let's do this. Funny story, right after I finished cleaning up the workbench, um, an alien visited Seabase for the first time and came aboard and asked about book scanners and actually wanted one. Uh, and after no one bothered an eye for, for this machine for four years or, or was interested in it at all, this is crazy that the moment I've taken it apart, a person comes around and wants it. Meet Paul and <laughs> please explain why. So, <laughs> please explain why. <laughs> Uh, I'm Paul. I came from Vancouver, from the hackerspace there, Decentral or Decontrol, um, and we uh, were looking to build a, a book scanner like this. Uh, we found it difficult to find parts, or even we were thinking of buying one if we could find one. We found that to be a bit difficult as well. And so uh, I happened to be in Berlin, and I heard rumors that there is a book scanner somewhere in Berlin. So after looking around and trying to connect with people, I discovered Eon here in at Seabase had this book scanner, so I quickly got in touch with him. Unfortunately, by the time that we were able to meet up, this is more or less how it looked. <laughs> so there's other parts elsewhere. But uh, but the good thing is I was able to discover how he took it apart because we had to put it back together. And um, that's what we'll be doing when I take it back with me to Vancouver shortly. So awesome. So this machine will have a second life in Canada, in yeah. Vancouver. That's pretty cool. I hope I get to see some pictures. I'll put them in some future episode as soon as, uh, as, soon as we're there. Uh, this is uh, pretty cool. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. <laughs> Absolutely. That, I mean, next time, just come a day early. 
Yeah, yeah, good to know. <laughs> the next book scanner. Yeah, uh, or you, the next you, next big project that you research and want to start. When you're taking Libreflip apart. That <laughs> probably won't happen for quite Another some four time. years. <laughs> ten. <laughs> Let's make it ten. <laughs> so, um, thanks for watching. If And if you're new to the series, this is just one part of a longer series where I show all the steps how to build the page turning, open source, uh, book scanner, Libreflip yourself. At least I uh, try to make a recreatable version of this uh, thing that I'm making. Uh, in the next episode, we'll fiddle with uh, the page turning and uh, try to get it to work with the new stepper driver that we put in. Uh, and also, uh, someone on the DIYBookScanner.org forum tipped me off that the uh, suction box might actually have the wrong geometry. That's pretty bad if it would be the case. But um, we'll we'll uh, explore this in the next or the episode after. So um, yeah, stay tuned and see you soon.